Hey guys, today we're gonna to take a look at how to do some quick and easy research using SEMrush and their keyword tools. All right, so in the past, we've looked at some other ways to do keyword research, which is important for both paid search as well as organic search. So as you're, if you're gonna be building content, it's important to know, you know what keywords people are searching for, what phrases they're searching for, what types of content they're searching for. There are free tools to do this, like we talked about in the past. Uh, we did a video about how to use Google's uh, ad tools to actually do some keyword research. Um, but today we're going to look at SEMrush, which is one of the more popular tools in the industry for doing um, keyword analysis, audits of your website, um, and at looking at competitors. So that is one thing that Google's uh, ad tools are not going to do particularly well, is show you what keywords your competitors are ranking for and where you may have opportunities to beat those competitors. So let's dive in, take a quick look at some rush, which by the way, I always thought was SEM rush, but apparently the people at the company, you know, call it some rush, but who am I to tell them what to call our company? Um, so <laughs> the tool that we're going to look at today first is the keyword magic tool. And so what you're going to do in here, and I'm just using the free version, by the way, of SEMrush today, um, cause I have client information, and a bunch of the other one in our account, uh, which I can't show you, sorry. Um, so let's, uh, say that we're building, we're going to be working on a, uh, pressure washing company. So we're going to just look at pressure washing. All right. So, and then you see the, here, the information, um, it's going to show you a list of keywords that are related to, uh, the pressure washing, and it's going to rank them by the search volume. Okay. And so the search volume is the average, uh, monthly searches that are happening for those terms. And what is all this stuff? Well, let's take a look at it. So intent is basically what the searcher is probably trying to look for. And they define this in a couple in, in a unique way. It's a little bit different than the way Google defines intent, but essentially if you see a C here, it's going to be for commercial, right? So they're seeing uh, like Ryobi pressure washer that is commercial. Somebody's looking to potentially buy that. Um, if you see the I or the T, the I is informational. They're just looking for information about that electric pressure washer or T is going to be transactional. Uh, they're looking at, um, you know, what things that relate to making a purchase. So the reason that's different than commercial is, um, they're just looking at different options potentially, but they're not necessarily at that action stage yet from what I understand. So why does this matter? Well, because it depends on what type of audience you want to appeal to with your content. So if you're writing a blog and you know that you want to appeal to somebody that is potentially further down in the, um, process of purchasing. So say you're a retailer and you want to appeal to people that are ready to pull the trigger, uh, no pun intended for pressure washing, uh, on, you know, making a transaction, you're probably going to want to lean toward, uh, the, you know, the ones that are in transactional or that are in that commercial, um, intent. Okay. So the volume, like I said before, is the average number of searches that are happening in a month. Obviously, you know, you would think you want to lean towards the, the ones that are the highest volume, which is true, except that you also need to look at this, which is keyword difficulty. So the keyword difficulty basically shows how hard it is to rank or compete for that keyword. So, uh, it's on a range of, um, uh, I believe one to a hundred. And so as you get closer to a hundred, it becomes much more difficult to rank for that. So, um, you're going to be competing against major retailers. You're going to be competing against sites that have been around for a long time that get a lot of traffic as you get up into these. So you're going to want to potentially look at okay volume keywords that are not as difficult to rank for. So for instance, like this pressure washing services is a 33 compared to a 79 up here. So, uh, maybe that's something and it still gets over 22,000 searches. Um, and this is in the U S for a whole. Um, so that's something to maybe look at now you can refine this by, um, more of a, um, limited area so that you can start to look at maybe local searches and that kind of stuff. 
that would be good as well so that you see how you compete. Okay, this cost per click would be related to paid search. So this is what you could expect uh, for paying for these keywords um, if you were bidding on them in Google Ads. So for instance, pressure washing service, 580 a click. That's because those guys are potentially making a couple hundred dollars off of these um, keywords. So if they get a lead that stems from this, it's potentially going to be you know several hundred dollars. So it's worth it for them to pay that to get that lead. Whereas, you know, if this is just somebody doing research about best electric pressure washer, it's probably somebody that's a commercial or retail site that's selling pressure washers. Um, they're still trying to, you know, uh, do some research on that. So maybe you're not going to bid as much on them. Okay. Um, and then the, uh, the SERP features pay, uh, metric is really about like all the stuff that's going on on the page. So you know, is there a map pack? Is there images? Is there shopping going on? All the stuff that pushes your keywords or your SERPs down on the page, clutters up the page. That is something to consider, but I, it's really not something to plan for um, because that's going to change, you know, uh, depending on what Google's testing and that kind of stuff. So I, I don't really pay that much attention to that. So this will tell you about these keywords. Then if you click on um, the keyword list, uh, if you have a paid plan, you can start to add those to a list so that you can put together a plan. Okay. They also have, um, things over here that you can kind of select groupings of keywords a little bit better. So is it related to, for instance, pumps, pressure washing pumps or products, PSI, electric, that kind of stuff. Um, and you can also look for, um, refine this by things like, you know, a phrase match or exact match, that kind of thing. Um, you can also include specific keywords. So if you wanted to really narrow down this research, you can get in here and start doing these filters. Um, or maybe you only want to look, for instance, at um, transactional keywords. You can do that here. That'll filter that by that so that you can start to um, understand these a little bit better. So this uh, will give you a lot more keywords in this once you have a um, you know paid plan, um, but that will give you a sense of how this is laid out. And so you, and you can sort these by the different things. So if you want to look at, for instance, the um, the keyword difficulty and sort it by very low difficulty keywords, you can do that. Um, but then you start to see here you drop very quickly. In keyword volume, um, you know, like uh, 500, 70, 480, that kind of thing. Maybe that's okay for you, especially if you're building out content groupings and you can want to start ranking quickly for these keywords. So that's just something you're going to have to decide. Is it worth your time to start going after these type of specific, uh, very low difficulty keywords, even though they're not super high volume, just to kind of get your site on the map? Maybe you take time to build, build your site with that kind of tool. So the, um, keyword gap is where you can start to look at competitive data. This is where you can add, for instance, your own, um, and competitors information. Um, you know, you can understand, uh, your own domain ov overview stuff. So for instance, say I will put in our, our, uh, cremation client, cremation jewelry client. Um, this gives you the overall information for the domain, right? And so you can start to see how they're ranking. Um, and then it'll show you some of the main organic com competitors that are coming up for, um, the same keywords. And this is where you can then go to like the keyword gap analysis and say, okay, well, these are the companies that I'm competing against within this area. And, you know, what do I need, need to do to compete? And so you can add competitors here. Uh, let's say, I don't know who these people are up oh, and I can't do that. With the, the free account. Um, so once you have an idea of those competitors, you can add them in here and then you can, um, start to see the overlap of, um, your keywords and uh, where you, maybe they are ranking better than you. Okay. So I just, I know that this is another company in that space. 
and we can start to see uh, where they rank in comparison to this other site. So for cremation jewelry, for instance, they're ranking at seven. These guys are at 62. Um, it's a relatively high volume keyword keyword. So that's an area obviously that you could start to encroach on that, see what they're doing for those keywords on their site. Um, what kind of content are they writing? How are they, the backlinks that they're getting, that kind of thing. And, you know, potentially go after them, uh, to increase your rankings for something, you know, a very high level keyword like, like that. Similarly, you know, for all of these different, uh, keywords here, um, you see that these guys, they're a much larger site. Um, and they have, you know, very high rankings in comparison to, uh, these guys. So, um, and you can see the difficulty over here. So for instance, cremation rings is a, not a very difficult keyword. This is something that they could go after pretty easily, probably to go from 77 to, um, five. And you can take a look at the URLs here and say, okay, well, we want to see what kind of content they have. You can then assess and analyze that content and see if it's something that you can compete with them with. Okay. So that's just a really quick look at some of the keyword stuff that you can do, uh, with SEMrush. Uh, we'll get into more depth with this, like the backlink gap analysis, the overall traffic analysis and that kind of stuff. But I just want to give you a quick look that you can even do some just very minimal research for free, just using the free account. It doesn't give you very large breadth of data. Uh, but if you just have a quick question about what people are doing or how your competitors are ranking, you can answer that without having to upgrade. I think there's a limit on how many searches you can conduct a day, um, and how many keywords you'll get. But if you want to upgrade to the paid account, which we do typically recommend, it is a very, uh, great tool for, you know, analyzing your competitors and understand how you can compete against them. Um, and, uh, if you want to do that, um, we do have a link in the description, uh, to, uh, get a free, um, limited account for, uh, a sample. Um, so you can check that out, sign up, do some analysis for your site. Um, if you need help with your SEO and with your keyword research or your analytics, Hey, give us a holler. We can do that at Apotheca. Um, uh, I did, we'll put a link as well for a 30 minute, uh, consultation down in our, uh, description. So you can give us a holler. We'll talk to you about questions you may have and see how we can help you with your marketing programs. Uh, if you have questions about SimRush or any of the other things we talked about today, like keyword analysis or keyword, um, uh, research, uh, please feel free to comment. We'd love to talk to you. We answer those as quickly as we can. So have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.